Hi friends, this is Deanna Willison from Our Blooming Catholic Life. Well, actually, I'm the cameraman today. This is my good friend, Kelly. Hello. And she's here today to help us out. We're hopefully out of the bird epidemic, the mysterious bird epidemic. And so she's going to do a little demo and tell us how to clean our bird feeders. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, like Deanna said, my name's Kelly and I've kind of dabble in different nature centers and I love nature and um, just want to kind of do the best for all of the critters outside and today there's I just have a bunch of different things to show you about um, that help me when I'm going to clean my bird feeders so back in the spring there was this people started to notice some really weird things happening with some of the fledgling birds and then just birds that they were finding around their feeders and throughout their yards um, and there are a couple different kinds of birds this is a starling a European starling um, this one's a blue jay alrighty and there's a bunch of others like robins um, some wrens different kinds of birds that were affected by this really weird um, we don't know exactly what it is, <laughs> um, but this illness that birds were experiencing. And so the main symptoms of this bird illness were kind of crusty eyes um, and some neurological things going on. They kind of have like a tilty head. They were just disoriented and um, just looking very sickly and ill. Um, and scientists couldn't really figure out what was going on. It started in around May and then around July things started to wane wane a little bit although um, there's still some reports of things happening here and there um, but the good news is um, during so during the time that the illness was so uh, prevalent in our area and this happened throughout the mid-Atlantic all the way up to Maine um, down towards um, the south like West Virginia places like that um, it was, I think, 11 different states that had documented cases of whatever this weird illness was. <laughs> um, so the Maryland Department of Natural Resources, finally, it took a long time. People didn't really know, and we still don't know what actually the cause of this is. There's a lot of different speculation, like maybe a disease. There was a disease that would cause the crusty eyes um, that kind of had an outbreak back in the 90s. But... Mm -hmm they didn't have those neurological symptoms that we were seeing with the birds. Um, there were, you know, maybe it's a fungus, maybe it's, you know, who knows. There was also some talk that, you know, it was kind of or pretty interesting scientifically that the worst part of the, um, of the pandemic or the bird illness <laughs> was, <laughs> took place. Uh, at around the same time that the cicadas were active here right, in this the, the part. brood X. Brood X cicadas, yeah, not the annual ones. Um, so people don't, scientists still really don't know. Um, what are things they did test for? Do you remember? Um, there were a bunch of different bird diseases, like the crusty eye things. Um, a lot of the normal things, all of them checked out. I don't know if there was do you remember any specifics? I think they checked for like West Nile and oh, things yeah. that would make sense. Yeah, um, but there were just, it was a weird combination of symptoms is right. what, what folks were noticing. And, and these birds were ultimately dying um, and just Pretty couldn't quickly figure it out. Too, it seemed like. Yeah, so definitely alarming. I'm on a, a couple of different bird sites. Um, also um, kind of monitor the emails for the Maryland Master Naturalist and things were just, crazy this spring between the cicadas and then all this bird illness. I mean, right. people were really um, not sure what was happening. Um, so uh, DNR um, and slash USDA actually came out with a phone number that you can call if you do see a sick or, or dead bird. And I'll give you that phone number. It's a, their wildlife hotline. It's one 463 Six four nine seven, and so if you do happen to put your feeders back out because they did officially say that you can start to put feeders back out and the reason that um, you would want to put feeders or take your feeders away um, during a time of a bird illness is sometimes those feeders can spread disease or 
um, be a source for whatever that illness is. Right. So because birds don't social distance <laughs> and yeah. they don't wash their feet and be. They don't have little masks. Right. They don't have any of that. So we had um, to help them out. We did. Um, so if you still see anything, definitely call that number. Um, but numbers of bird illnesses seem to be decreasing in the area. Um, but you can be kind of like a citizen science if you do notice um, anything um, and call that number so that they can maybe eventually figure out what, what was going on with right. the birds. And definitely don't touch the birds with your bare hands. Yes, gloves are your friend <laughs> but everybody probably has a zillion gloves and disinfectants right. and all that stuff now anyway since we're in our own little pandemic but um i just wanted to take a couple minutes to show you about how to clean your bird feeders because one thing the maryland department of natural resources is recommending is to clean your bird feeders regularly and at least once a week disinfect them so what you do to clean a bird feeder is just use some dish soap and some water so I generally do this outside just because it can be a little bit messy but um, I usually get a bin kind of like this one sorry <laughs> and see if I can get a few soap suds going sorry it's a little bit low you can always use the bar soap too I think it's okay yeah Deanna has some you just really run that cool under the water too oh, okay you can see it's bubbling up already. Yeah. Okay. So we get a nice soapy mixture. Um, bird feeders can be kind of tricky to clean because they have lots of little nooks and crannies. And this one is a suet feeder and you can see it's, it's pretty crusty. <laughs> so I usually will soak them in the water, in the soapy water. And then, I don't know about you guys, but bottle brushes are like my favorite thing to clean with. Um, they get in a lot of places that I, I can't with my hands. Um, I also have some tiny little, because so many people are using lots of different water bottles these days, usually I like to still go to the baby section and get some of these like long little mini brushes. Good tip. Uh, like this. Okay, they have all different shapes and sizes now. Okay, um, for just all right, here's another bird feeder. Um, this one looks like a... Um, um, oh, we put sunflower seed in it. Oh, you put fun... Okay, so it's multiple kinds of birds. Yep. Um, but you can actually unscrew a lot of these feeders depending on the quality. I mean, when you're buying a bird feeder, it's always nice. The nicer quality ones tend to last a whole lot longer and they're much more cleanable. Right. <laughs> um, especially during a time like this um it's important to just clean your feeders yep. so for this one you can open up the top you can you can pull these out um, i don't think for our purposes we'll do it today but you can also unscrew the bottom here to be able to to get any grime and gook that's and there's going the to always be a lot of mold and stuff just yes. crumbs built up in the bottom Bottoms definitely so i like to soak them for a little bit but i'll pull this one back out um and, and just it's basically fat so yes that's why the dish, the dish soap, soap is helps. really good because it's a degreaser you can see it's coming off pretty quickly and easily in there and then i use my bottle brush i probably should have had like an apron or something on <laughs> a rain <Nope>. jacket <laughs> Spraying all sorts of stuff everywhere. Yeah, we're just doing a demo, not a full clean. We're just helping you get the idea here. We don't have time to clean all the yes. feeders fully. Okay, so here's one that I cleaned with the soapy water already. Um, and then after that, one thing you can do is put some gloves on. So maybe I'll do that before. Um, because the next step is disinfecting. So for disinfecting purposes, they want you to have a one to 10 ratio of bleach to water solution. Um, in this case, we found out <laughs> these, a lot of the bleach that they sell now um, is concentrated. So pay attention to that. Uh, they have little diagrams on the side that help you to understand what the ratios are and things like that. The biggest thing is you wanna make sure that you're providing some disinfectant properties with your with your bleach so you don't want it so low that it's not really killing all of the 
bacteria or um, viruses that it, you might want it to kill. Right, and um, not so high that you kill your grass and not or your so fruit high that you kill everything else. I mean, one tip, I definitely try to dilute any bleach that, um, you know, if I'm going to use, dump it out or anything oh, like deleted, that. Oh, dilute it even more even before more. you dump it. Great yep. tip. Great tip. Definitely. Okay. So, for our purposes and our demo, just kind of take the newly... Right. And you used a glass container to measure the Clorox. Always probably I a good idea. I did. I did. It was um, what I had on hand, but it's, it's a good safe uh, <laughs> so same thing you probably want the water in the bucket before you add the bleach just to be yes. a little extra safe because it and can be basically gross. just like <laughs> if you're ever in the food industry and you had to like disinfect things and you had to do the rinse um kind of similar and then you have a nice clean bird feeder um i like to set it outside and just let it kind of bask in the sun to dry um, one important thing that you want to make sure you don't do is fill it with bird seed too early before it's not dry are we um, going to rinse that with water? Yes, by the Clorox it is okay. good here. Sorry, I forgot about that part. But yep, you use your handy dandy hose to rinse it. And then, and then you can let it sit to dry. <laughs> um, I can show you a little bit more how I would get into some of these nooks and crannies. You have your bottle brush that gets in some, but then in this one in particular, these little brushes help the most. Yeah. I mean, the more that you can actually uh, take the bird feeder apart, the better. Yep, and um, I will do that after you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, got it. Um, but you can get inside the little holes. These little brushes really get all that dirt and grime out, fungus, especially when the bird feeders get rained on. Um, yeah. They tend to get moldy Alrighty, so there's another example of how you'd start to clean a, a kind of tricky one to get um, to get into all those little nooks and crannies. But what about that funky bird bath behind you? How are oh, we doing that? Yes. So in a similar manner, you would. Now are we walking over there? Or just no, no, we don't have to do it. You can okay. Just tell so basically, very similarly, um, you want to empty your bird feed or bird bath of all the nice grimy water <laughs> and that's only sat there for like two days but it's really uh, hot with thunderstorms like and the, and the wiggler <laughs> stopped so i figured i'll wait until i clean it to put fresh batteries yeah in. that looks that's perfect. i do not normally <laughs> leave it that way <laughs> so you just dump that and you do something similar you can use soapy water again and your bottle brush to kind of scrub it down um then you want to disinfect with the bleach solution just kind of swirl it around a little bit um, dump that and then rinse with clean water before you then refill it with yeah probably um, that one it's more important about the rinsing with clean water yes. at the end yes definitely you don't want to disinfect the poor bird in, in that way no. <laughs> not at that high of a concentration nope. so yeah and just be careful when you are working with bleach you know plants and things around ah, you so move that out of the way yeah it might be a good idea or you know worst case if you have like a cloth that has the bleach solution on it mm. i mean that might um, be a little bit too, more yeah. practical if it's in an area that you can't um or if it's move. too heavy right yeah. yep good tip all righty so your best friends when cleaning um <laughs> what about that wood feeder oh it's a little trickier yeah the wood feeders are tricky this is a really old one that i had um that we've had i mean first i would empty all the grime sometimes so oh, there's a couple little insects in there oh my <laughs> um and these wood feeders it's just more important when you disinfect the wood feeders and clean them to just let them dry because the wood keeps the moisture in a little bit longer mm. than like plastic yeah they're definitely um, gonna need to dry longer. and they definitely i mean if you sit it out in the sun on a nice sunny day um it should really help um so but you wash them similarly you just use your your bottle brush you can scrub anything it's probably gonna be really great on that wood yeah it it'll work really well and just scrub away let me see if i can get this and those little bottle brushes really really help a lot with getting some of the small stuff mm -hmm. um there's a little oh that's a great one too yeah, yeah. So you just keep scrubbing and rinsing, scrubbing and rinsing. Sometimes initially you might, well, you might need to change your water and you also 
might want to use the force of the water to spray things out initially mm. as well. Good tip. Okay, so just like that, you want to finish cleaning, then disinfect the same way um, with the wooden feeders. Um, rinse again and set out in the sun to dry. Okay, and do you have any bonus friends there for people who have watched this long? Oh, I do have some bonus friends. <laughs> all right so it's been like quite the nature season this year with all of the cicadas all the crazy bird Get in there. Um, illness but one really cool thing is it's monarch season so these guys just uh we've been raising some monarchs in our or outside on our porch here's a little guy chomping on some milkweed i'm gonna see if i can find a super teeny guy um, one thing, speaking of like things uh, harming wildlife, there's a little wasp that uh, goes, that lays its eggs and parasitizes these mo baby monarch caterpillars. Oh um, you, you can see the teeny the tiny hole. There he is. <laughs> really teeny, just hatched uh, probably last, I don't know, yesterday or today. My goodness. Yeah. So cute. Um, there's a tiny wasp that will parasitize these caterpillars mm -hmm. and um, it's really important um, just for the monarchs. We, we try to find their eggs um, on the underside of the milkweed leaves um, before they actually hatch mm -hmm. because the wasp don't lay their eggs and parasitize the caterpillars until they're caterpillars. Um, but ultimately, if the caterpillar is parasitized, it, it dies. Um, and what happens is like, it's kind of gross and well, but, <laughs> but um, the, the new, the wasp will then um, kind of, the eggs grow inside. Uh, so that, the wasp lays eggs inside the caterpillar yeah, and they feed and them. It's yeah, and it's not good. <laughs> and then they can quickly parasitize other, um, oh, other caterpillars, yeah. especially like if you have them in, if you are raising them in cat, you know, in cages and things before you let them go. Right. You do have to be really careful. One of the telltale signs, sometimes the chrysalises don't, um, they get black and they never fully um, mm. turn into a butterfly. Okay. And the telltale sign of this parasit um, parasitic wasp is that there'll be this tiny little like string, almost like, almost like a spider web string that mm. comes from the chrysalis down towards the ground and that is a sure sign that that wasp has been there and has parasitized that caterpillar. Probably it parasitized the caterpillar and then when it um, became a chrysalis, that's when it emerged and came oh out. So ugh, not yeah. good, but we're just trying to keep a close eye on our babies that we have. We right, usually have right. them in a big container um, and watch for signs. Sound good? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, so I have swallowtail caterpillars that I keep by my front door and I keep an eye on them because their main predator that I've noticed is praying mantis, which normally I like, but if I see a praying mantis over there, I got to move them quick and they just, well, they just eat the caterpillar. Yeah. Yum. There's a bunch over there. I see them. Not too many parsley leaves left. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> Hopefully they're all done soon. Yeah. Okay. So that's for it, friends. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I will shoot them over to Kelly and we'll get answers out to you. Again, make sure you've turned on the closed captioning because all this information is going to be really clear for you below, but also check the description. I'll put that number for the bird hotline again. And thank you guys for joining us and for taking good care of our little friends. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.